All right. So on Wednesday, we were entering information so we could graph the function. And so I asked you to go ahead and to put this equation into your calculator. So if you have not done that yet, then you need to do so. Now, 2.2 has already been scheduled. It's due tonight. We're just finishing this up and then we're gonna get into 2.3. All right, so the amount C is equal to C at T of cholesterol measured <clears throat> in milligrams per deciliter in the blood of a certain man on an unhealthy diet. And so they give us that formula. T is time measured in months. All right, so what letter is my function? C. What does it measure? And that is measured milligrams per deciliter. All right, so what is your variable? And what does that represent? Months or number of months. Okay. All right, so when I come down here, just based on that information, I can draw my X and Y axis or my vertical and horizontal lines, and then I can um, label my axes. So the horizontal is representative of what function or variable? Variable. variable. So this is T, I'm talking about months. So then my function is C, cholesterol, and we show it's in milligrams per Yes, leader. Again, I will grade that you have those correctly labeled on your quiz and or test. Okay, so we know that to make the graph, we do y equals, which you hopefully already have completed that, and in your calculator, you'll put x in for t. All right, so two, when we're making the graph, what do we go to? Window. Window. Now, when we use window, we do X minimum and X maximum. So I'm gonna read part A to find those values. So make a graph that shows cholesterol level C as a function of time T for the first 12 months. So this tells me my minimum is what? Zero. And my maximum? 12. 12. Once you get that in, what do you hit? Zoom, no second. Zoom button, and then what? Zero. Zero. Second goes with the table. So since we're doing graphs. So let me turn mine back on. There's my equation, my window. I've already got zero and 12 in, so I'm going to do zoom zero. So you should get something that looks like this. Do not then uh, I need to take a look at yours maybe after class so I can help you figure out your error, okay? So if I sketch this, oh wait, zero to 12, I need to include that. And then it looks something like this. All right, so that's part A. Part B says, the doctor has issued a warning that this man may experience severe health problems if cholesterol levels exceed 200 milligrams per deciliter of blood are reached. If you are asked to find out when the man's cholesterol level will exceed 200 milligrams per deciliter of blood, and then you're gonna be asked, are you given the function or the variable? Okay, so this is what we're given. All right, so when I'm determining what's given, then I read 200 milligrams per deciliter. That's a huge hint right there because which is measured in milligrams per deciliter, function or variable? Function, so which were we given? You're given the function value. So we were given that C equals 200 milligrams per deciliter, that's what we were given, so I can state given the function value. 
C, if you are asked what the cholesterol level will be in eight months, are you be, being given function or variable? Well, I come up here and go, okay, I'm given months. I'm given months, so they gave me the variable value, and that's T. So we were given that T equals eight months. So we were given the variable value. If the unhealthy diet is continued indefinitely, what eventual cholesterol level will be reached? Okay, when they state eventual cholesterol level, what are they asking us to find? The limiting value. The limiting value. Mm -hmm. All right, now, there are two ways to find the limiting value. One is easier than the other. So one is you could push trace, and then just start going, going, going. But in my opinion, the limiting value is easier to find on the table. All right, so if I'm going to utilize the table, then I have to go to table set. So I'm gonna go second, table set, and this is where we need a start and a change. So I'm going to critically think through this. So when I look at my graph, we start at zero, and we know eventually up here we get a limiting value. So we get a limiting value closer to the 12 months. So I'm going to start at 10 months. So I'm going to start at 10 months. Somebody else might have started at eight months. It doesn't matter. Even if you started at zero months. I just know I'll get quicker to it because it was towards the end of the graph. All right, then I'm even going to switch this and go by twos instead of ones, just so hopefully I can get there quick. And then I'm going to do second table, and I'm going to look over on my function values, which is my y, and then I'm just going to keep going until I see if I, oh, there we go. We hit a limiting value. What number starts repeating? 235. So that tells me that 235 is my limiting value. Now, I need to label 235. What is this number? So we're finding this limiting value, which is this number. So is this cholesterol or months? It's cholesterol, which is in milligrams per deciliter. All right, so then it says take a look at your graph. Is your graph concave up or concave down? Down. And then it wants us to explain that. So we start out, not the graph, not the function, but the, what is the function? Cholesterol. So I would say the cholesterol is so follow that graph is it increasing or decreasing increasing. increasing at what kind of a rate <laughs> decreasing rate okay so that's just a good reminder of what we did mainly on Wednesday. That assignment is due tonight. Now, when we get into 2.3, we kind of get away from uh, and do a little bit different concept than we have been doing. Not all relates, obviously, but we are going to get into something a little bit different. What we're going to get into is linear equations. All right, so we're going to be looking at equations. 
Does any, can anybody tell me what it means when it says linear equations? What does it create if we graph it? Straight line. A straight line. The root word of linear is line. Okay. Now, this always causes me to pause. When I see the word linear, I am always reminded of when I completed my master's. I completed my master's online through a college in Shadron. It was Shadron uh, University in Shadron, Nebraska. And so one of my math instructors, he would teach a class and he would record the audio. I didn't have the video of him teaching it. I just had the audio. So then he would post his notes and then I would listen to the audio of that. And anytime he came to this word, he said solving linear equations. Y'all, I've taken a lot of math classes. I had never heard anybody pronounce it linear. And I'm like, this guy has a, I'm pretty sure he had his doctorate in math. I'm like, and I'm like, okay, he's teaching out of Nebraska. So at the time I had a colleague that she was originally from Nebraska. And I went, Christy, is this a Nebraska thing? Or, you know, that they say Lanier? And she was like, no. So I have no idea. Never prior to this that I heard anybody pronounce it that way, nor have I since. So I don't know where he picked up on that. So. Anyway, it is linear, not linear. All right, so in this section, we're going to be dealing with only linear equations. Well, how do we know an equation is linear? So we know because the variables are always raised to the first power. What that means is you won't see an exponent. Because if I have the variable x and there's no visible exponent, it's understood to be 1 which means it's raised to the first power, which is where they get the wording of first power. So in this section, you're not gonna have to solve an equation that is like, oh, if I did, I was doing this last class, what did I do? If I did two M squared plus three equals eight, that is not linear because this is an exponent larger than one. We're not gonna be solving those. Okay, so we don't have to worry about those. We also do not have to take any equations like if we had 2m plus 3 equals 8 where we have a radical or a square root, okay? We're not going to have to do equations like that. And the other one is if you had an example where you had like um, 5 over m plus 3 equals 8 where the variables in the denominator. We're not going to have to do equations like that. If you want to do equations like that, please feel free to take our algebra for STEM course and you will encounter equations like that. Okay. All right. So now many of you, if not all, have taken some algebra in your path past math background. So in class today, I have many of you that are very comfortable with it made sense to you, you did well on it. So this is, is just gonna be like a review that won't be difficult for you. Others of you don't like algebra, you hoped you would never have to do algebra again. We do very little of it, but we do do some. So for those of you that it's a bit of a more struggle, you may have to put more effort and time in these. We don't do huge equations, but we do some algebra, all right? All right, so as we go through this, if you notice that we have the variable x and it is to the first power, so we know we have a linear equation. Now, equations are always separated by the equal sign. So when I teach this, I always draw that vertical line. You don't have to, uh, but for some, it may be helpful, okay? So ultimately, our goal is to get the variable, which in this case is x, on one side, all by itself. So when I look at this, I see that I have a two I need to get rid of and I have a 10 I need to get rid of, okay? It matters which one you move first. So 
Anything that is not directly attached to the X, we move first. So we're going to move this plus 10 to the other side. Well, in order to move it to the other side, we do its opposite. What's the opposite of plus? Subtraction. So we are wanting to get rid of it on the left side, which means then I have to subtract it on the right side. Now, some of you in your algebra background, you show minus 10 on both sides. If you, that's, that is fine. That's how I was taught. We subtract 10 from both sides because over here we know 10 minus 10 is what? Zero. Zero. So that's why I just don't show it over there. I just mark it out. All right. So on the left side, I'm left with 2x equals, and then I have 20 minus 10, which is 10. So I'm getting closer to the x being by itself. So now I have 2x. 2 is what is called the coefficient. Mathematically, that represents 2 times x. How do we undo multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide by, I want to get rid of the 2, so I'm going to divide by 2. That cancels. We're left with x, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, Please know that on a quiz or a test, you need to show me your work. I don't just want the original equation and then all you give me is x equals and whatever number it equals. You have to show me your work. Now, I also don't require that you check your work, but I want to show you that how that's done if you choose to check to see if you're correct or not. We're saying the value of x is 5. So in place of that x, I'm going to put a 5. So 2 times 5 plus 10, that should equal 20. <coughs> Fair enough does, so I know my answer is correct. So I do have a way to check that. All right, let's look at the next one. How is b different than a? I have an f on both sides, don't I now? Okay, so again... The equals is what separates my side, and I'm going to move things from one side to the other. So when I have an F or a variable on both sides, I need to move my variable to where it's only on one side. It doesn't matter which side you move it to. I'm going to move them to the left just because we're most uh, comfortable with the variable being on the left side, right? So I have positive 2f, I want to move it to the other side. Not just the 2, I want to move the whole term over there. How would we do that? Subtract. We're going to subtract it. So I'm going to get rid of it from the right side, which means I'm going to subtract it on the left side. That's how we move it. So now we have 6f minus 5 equals positive 4. So now I have 6f minus 5, and I go, oh, I want to move this 5 first. So it's being subtracted. So in order to move it, I do its opposite. So I'm going to add 5. So then I'm left with 6f equals 9, 6 times f to undo that multiplication, because I only want to move the 6. I am going to get, sorry, running out of rooms. F equals, what was it? 1.5. So you can go in and do alpha y equals 1, put in 9, 6, hit enter, and you'll get 1.5. Because remember, we set our calculator up to get us our answers in decimal form. Okay. All right. Part C is similar to that one. Now, notice my variables T. Let's look at this first one. Again, the math terminology is the number in front is called the coefficient. So over here, the coefficient of this term is 8. What is the coefficient of this term? One. Negative 1. If you don't see the one, it's understood to be there. What's the coefficient of this variable t? Positive one. Okay. All right. Again, we have a t on either side. 
So I need to move them all to one side. I'm gonna move this T to the left side. Since it's positive to move it, I'm gonna do its opposite, which would be subtract. So I'm gonna subtract T from both sides. Okay, all right, now here's where you need to be careful right here. And the reason I ask you what is the coefficient because we have negative one and negative one. So if I went to my calculator, because if you didn't trust doing that in your head, this coefficient is negative one, and then I'm gonna subtract one. So I get negative two. So I get negative two T. And then be careful here, what's left on the right side? Negative three, minus three, which is negative three. Mm -hmm. And if you just drop that negative, you're gonna get an incorrect solution. All right, so now we've got our T's all on one side. So I wanna move this plus 15. So I'm gonna subtract 15 and I'm left with negative two T equals. Now, again, if you're not comfortable or good with your positive and negatives, then go ahead and put it in your calculator. But the rule is if they're both uh, negative, if they're the same sign, same sign, add and use that sign. So this would be negative 18. Then we're gonna divide both sides by negative two. So we get T equals negative divided by negative is what? Positive. positive, so we get positive nine. Okay. Just refreshing our algebra skills. Now, example two is probably one of my students' least favorite things to have to encounter, okay? Because look at example two, part A. How does that differ from what we just did? I don't have just an X or just an F or just a T. When I look at that first one, I have a W, I have a B, and I have a T. And currently, that equation is solved for what? What's it solved for right now? W is all by itself. So that equation is solved for W right now. So guess what? They're not gonna ask me to solve it for W. It already is. So you're gonna be given several variables and it's going to ask you to solve for a particular variable. So in this case, it wants me to solve for B. Now, the steps we do are exactly the same. So the step and the process is the same. It's just that, like in this first example, I needed to move the 10 and I subtracted 10. Well, to get B by itself, I need to move the T. The T is just a variable instead of a specific number. We just don't know what value it is. But just like above, to move the 10, we subtracted 10 from both sides. If I wanna move plus T, I will do what? I'm going to subtract T. So it will get rid of it on the right side, and I'm going to subtract T on the opposite side. Now, in the prior part A, we then had 20 minus 10, which we can do and get 10. Well, now I have W minus T. I can't subtract that because I don't know what numbers they are. So if I can't subtract it, I just leave it alone and write W minus T. And then on the right side, I'm left with 2V. Now, again, we're wanting to get the V by itself. So I have 2 times V. How do we undo multiplication? Divide. And if I want the V by itself, I'm going to divide by the number 2. And you're dividing the 2 on the left side by that complete side. So now I'm left with V, so I'm gonna write this as V equals, and here's what I'm left with, W minus T over two. Now, I am 99% 
actually 99.9% confident that WebAssign will take it this way. I do want to point one other thing out, okay? In the numerator on top, we have W minus T. We have two terms. In the denominator, we just have the number two. What you need to realize is that two is a denominator to both of them. So it could be rewritten as W over two minus T over two. These two represent the exact same solution. Okay. All right. So this is currently solved for C. We're being asked to solve for what? T. All right, so here's my 5T, so I want to get rid of minus 30 first. How will we do that? I'm going to add 30. Gets rid of it on the right side. I'm going to add 30. Now, I don't know the value of C, so I can't technically add C plus 30, so I just leave it as C plus 30. And then on the right side, I'm left with 5t. 5t means 5 times t. What will I divide both sides by? 5. All right. So I am left with t equals, and this would be c plus 30 divided by 5. Now, the reason I pointed this out in this one, this would be similar for this one. It would be C over 5 plus 30 over 5. Well, if we rewrite it that way, what do you see occurs? What is 30 divided by 5? 6. So this and I hate that I'm running out of room, would be C over five plus six. So this and this are technically the same thing. Yeah. On the, on the, on the, yeah. I'm okay with you leaving it like this. Okay. Yeah. And a large reason why I show you both is because um, at, let's say you got something wrong on WebAssign and you never got this one right. And then when you go back and look at the key, the key technically will probably give you this one, even though had you entered that, it would have counted it correct. But I just want you at least to be aware, because then if you're studying something on the key, if I never showed you this, you might not know where that came from. Mm -hmm. So that's my purpose in doing that. Okay, part C. Sorry, get so wordy. I like hiding this so you know what we're focusing on. All right, solve for F. We want to solve it for X. This is very similar to the one that we just did. Okay, um, what am I going to move first? 40. The 40, and I'll do that how? Subtracting. Subtracting. And again, I can't take F minus 40, so I just rewrite that as F minus 40 equals, and I'm left with 10X. So now what will I do? Divide by 10. Divide by 10. So I'm left with x equals f minus 40 over 10. And it was a great question. And yes, if that's where you stopped on a test, you would get full credit. But I do want you to realize that this so I don't have to turn my page. You could rewrite that as f over 10 minus 40 over 10. Because when you do that, you would get F over 10 equals what? Four. Not equals, sorry, minus 
fourth. And this and this are the same thing. They just look differently. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to actually start doing some application. All right, you are ordering fast food for your family. The burgers you are ordering have a total of 19 grams of fat. That's the burgers. Fries have five grams of trans fat per order. Okay, y'all, notice what A says. It says find a formula. Okay, this goes back to what we did in 1.4. Do you recall in 1.4 where we would find the total cost? What were the two things that we defined when we were looking for to create a formula? Fixed cost, cost yeah. variable cost. So like if I was going to get a cab and they charge $10 and then they charge me $1.50 per mile. So we would create an equation. The fixed cost was $10 plus $1.50 times M for per mile, right? So the one that's associated with per is your variable cost. Now, that same process is what we're going to do to create these equations. We're just not going to be talking about cost. So instead of cost, what are we talking about? M. Friends. Friends fat, right? Okay, so find a formula that gives, so instead of total cost, we're talking about total trans fat. If you're uh, in your order, if you add so F number of orders of fries to your hamburger order, okay? All right, so based upon the information given, I see a T and I see an F. Which do you believe of those is my function? T, T, which is what? Not total cost, but total trans fat, trans fat which sounds awful. Okay. And it's talking about green. So my variable is F. F. And what does that represent? Number of fry orders. So if F is one, I've ordered one order of fries. If F is 10, I've ordered 10 orders of fries, okay? All right, now it wants me to do a formula. So let's look at back up here at the numbers that were given. We've already talked about when we dealt with 1.4 in total cost, we dealt with a fixed cost and a variable cost. So same thing applies, but instead of cost, we're looking at grams of fat. Which one's my fixed and which one's my variable? 19 grams. Remember, anything that has the word per, that's your variable cost or variable grams, variable trans fat, okay? All right, so you told me my function was T. So what would what would be how you would write this equation? So you said 5F plus 19. If you wrote 19 plus 5F, same thing, I don't care which order, okay? So here's your fixed grams of fat that came from your burger. Here is fries. We get five grams per order of fries. So if I don't get any fries, then I'm just getting my trans fat from the burger, which would be 19, okay? Now, if you also put T at F, that's fine too. So here's my equation. All right, B, how many order of fries Can you get, if you want to limit your family's trans fat intake in this meal to 29 grams? All right. So 
Now we've got to, and this is why the previous examples always said, hey, what was given? Function value or variable value? Because we're given 29 grams. So come up here to your definition. Were we given the function or were we given the variable? Function. We're given the function. So 29 grams, we were given the function value. My function is T, so we were given T equals 29. All right, here's why that's important. I'm going to rewrite my equation. T equals 5F plus 19. We're so used to doing T at some number equals, put that number into the F and calculate that I will have so many students that will calculate this as T at 29 equals five times 29 plus 19. That would be true if 29 was my number of fry orders, but it's not. T, I mean, 29 is your T. So in place of this T, what number am I gonna put? 29. It wants me to find out how many order of fries. So I'm solving this for F. So now this goes back to what we did above. I want to get the F by itself. So I first get rid of the plus 19 by subtracting it. 29 minus 19 is 10. 5F means 5 times F, so I'm going to undo that multiplication by division. So I'm left with F equals 10 divided by 5 is 2, and then you have to tell me two what? Orders of fries, not two grams of trans fat. F is number of fry orders, so two order of fries. Right. All right. Aerobic power can be thought of as the maximum oxygen consumption attainable per kilogram of body mass. One way in which physical educators estimate this is called the Queen's College Step Test. After physical exertion, a 15 second pulse count P is taken. Okay, so they give me something here. I have to determine if that is function or variable. The maximum oxygen consumption is approximated by the formula. So we're given this formula, which is your males. This formula, which is your females. And those are measured in milliliters per kilogram. Okay, so look at your two functions or your two equations. When I look at those, then that tells me is P your function or your variable? It's always your variable. The, the, Letter that is with the equation is always your variable. So we know P is the variable. All right, part A. Calculate the maximum oxygen consumption for a female who show a 15 second pulse count of 40. Okay, so I first look at this and I go, we're talking about the females. So I'm going to write that equation. F equals 65.81 minus 0.74 P. Okay, so when I look at this, if I define function, what letter, letter is it? F. And that is female what? What did F represent? Oxygen consumption. 
milliliters per kilogram. I'm going to abbreviate, so I have enough room. And P is my variable, and I have that in purple above. What does it represent? Fifteen second pulse count. So it's the number of fifteen second pulse count. So they sit there for fifteen seconds and count their pulse. So if they do that once, then they did that one fifteen second pulse count. Twice would mean a total of thirty seconds, right? Okay. So they go on to say that. Female who shows a 15 second pulse count of 40. So, is 40 your function or your variable? It's your variable. So, this is P equals 40. So, what that tells me is in my equation, I'm going to substitute 40 in for P. So, you can just write this as 65.81 minus 0 0.74 times 40. So calculate that and please tell me what you get. Okay, so 36.21 and don't forget we are calculating F. F is milliliters per kilogram. Now, this P in, in the 40, that is your variable. If we put that in functional notation, if I asked you how would that be written in functional notation, what would you tell me? Which you could have done that here. If you did, that's fine. Variable is always in the parentheses. Okay. All right. What 15 second pulse count for a male will indicate a maximum oxygen consumption of? Here's what we're given. Okay, so I see the word male, so I'm gonna write that function. Bless you. So notice my variable is the same. So when I define function and variable, my variable is the same. So it's still P, which is the number of 15 second pulse count. So how does the function change? It's now M. Now it's still oxygen consumption, but for who? The men. So this would be male oxygen consumption measured in milliliters per kilogram. Okay, so now I've got to figure out what is given. So we are given an oxygen consumption of this number measured in milliliters per kilogram. Were we given the function or the variable? You're given the function in this one. So in this one, you are given the function. And what did we call the function? M, so we were given M equals what? 35.7. So be careful because so many times I'll have students on a test pull this number and put it in for 15. But we don't because they gave us M, so we're going to put that value 35.7 in for M. So this one takes more, whoops, six, eight. 
This one takes more work because up here, the F was already by itself. All I had to do was plug this into the calculator. But now here, we're gonna have to manipulate the equation to get the letter P all by itself. So we're gonna go with that process of what we were doing at the beginning of the class. If I wanna get P by itself, how do I move 111.3? I'm gonna subtract it. So when you go to your calculator, you're gonna put in 35.7 minus 111.3. I don't know what that is. I do know it's negative. 75.6. Now, where you need to be careful, 111.3 is gone, but that minus sign is not. So over here, we have negative 1.68p. And so I want to get rid of the number that is being multiplied times the P, which is negative 1.68. So what happens then is you get P equals negative divided by negative is positive. And what did that come out to? Shocker, it's a whole number. All right, then I know, okay, P is my variable, so this is 45, 15 seconds, pulse count. Okay. All right, that's where we're going to stop today. Let me... Um,